Hi, my name is Charles Bockledge. We are here at High Power today to demonstrate how to operate our rental units in parallel. Today we are working with an HDR 190 and behind me we have an HDR 325. We have eight units that are capable of this operation from our HDR 125 all the way up to our HDR 1375 tandem unit. Um, so let's get into it. So first, let's confirm that all of the units that are, we are gonna be working in parallel are operating in the same voltage. Our rental units are equipped with a voltage selection switch. Um, it's, we are capable of three different voltages. We are going to confirm that both of our units that we're operating today are both operating in 208, 120, three phase voltage. Now let's take a look at our distribution panel. Here we're gonna check our connections for our phase cables, our paralleling cable, and our remote start jumper. Connect the phase cable of each unit to the system's common bus. Be sure to connect each phase cable to its corresponding color on each end of the cable. Connect each end of the paralleling cable into an input port on each unit. When wanting to operate in auto mode, we need to install a jumper on the remote start terminals. Okay, now we're taking a look at the control panel. There are two settings here that we need to take a, look, a closer look at. That's the generator mode and the controller address. The generator mode is the three position selector switch here on the, on the panel. The only two modes that we need to take a look at for the par paralleling system is midline and endline. If the generator is on the end of the paralleling communication chain, we need to have this mode in end line. If the generator is in the middle of the parallel communication chain, we need to have this mode in mid line. For this application, we have two units. Both units are gonna be in end line. Now that we have our generator mode selected, let's take a look at the controller address. This set point will be modified through our ComApp and Television 5 controller. To start, you will press the menu button, go to set points, and scroll down to communication settings. Here you will see controller address, and you can set this to any value between 1 and 32. Once you've changed it, you will need to recycle the power. Once the controller has turned back on, you will press metering, scroll to page 12, and if everything has been done correctly up to this point, you should see the values on the screen have changed to the corresponding positions you have set your controllers to. This indicates that the generators see each other and are ready to work in parallel. Another feature of our ComApp controllers is the engine priority. This will help determine the operation of the units in the paralleling system. It will determine which units and how many units run at a given time, or if all the units are to run simultaneously and share the load equally. To change the engine priority, click menu and go to set points. Scroll down to power management and here you will see the priority set point. This set point is displayed on page 12 of the IV5 controller. Now that your units are properly connected, successfully communicating, and your set points have been set, we are ready to operate and begin supplying power. For our application, we are going to set these units into auto mode for operation. I hope this video was helpful for paralleling high power gensets equipped with the ComApp NT base box and IV5 display. If you have any additional questions, 
please don't hesitate to reach out to the high power service line or service email.